Hey, this is Mead with AUSquared.com. I'm back with you for part two of how to make your own canvases. Uh, this is gonna actually be the uh, stretching a uh, canvas over a well-built stretcher bar uh, part. Uh, you're gonna need a couple of things to um, uh, stretch canvas. You're gonna need, you're gonna need some canvas. Uh, you'll need a uh, staple gun. Mine is uh, electric, it works quite nicely. Um, you will probably need a tape measure, a ruler, um, some kind of cutting device, um, and uh, you will need a properly built stretcher bar. Um, you can see this one's got the, uh, the bevels, the nice mitered corners stapled on the front, stapled on the back. Um, so this one's good to go. It's small, so it doesn't need any cross beams uh, or anything like that. No inner supports, um, and uh, it's kind of the edges are kind of rounded out, so um, it's it's uh, in good shape. Um, the uh, the first concern when you're um, uh, stretching uh, is uh, figuring out how much extra canvas um, that you're going to need. Uh, in my case, I know that it's 10 inches. Uh, uh, extra on uh, uh, on the larger than the dimensions of the uh, stretcher bar itself but to figure it out all you need to do is take the stretcher bar uh, take the depth and uh, the width add them together uh, and multiply by two and that'll give you how much extra you need okay um, the uh, First thing you're gonna do um, once you know how much extra canvas you're gonna need is you need to measure your stretcher bar. Uh, this one is 18 approximately by 14 and a half, so I know that I'm gonna need a uh, 28 by uh, 24 and a half. Um, so uh, that's it. Next step. All right, I've got this junky old bit of drop cloth here. Uh, it'll uh, it'll do for our purposes tonight, though. So we've got uh, 28 by 24 and a half. Boom. So 28. Nice thing about canvas is that it rips pretty easily. Once you get it started, then 24 and a half. About right here. This has a little seam on the edge, and that's going to have to come off. Just so that everything stretches at least decently. Again, you're going to want to use nice canvas. Uh, if I were doing this for real, I'd probably go ahead and iron this out uh, if it's this wrinkly. Um, just, you know, iron as normal. Uh, otherwise, you can. Um, uh, a lot of times when you're priming, a lot of the wrinkles will come out, depending on the weight of the canvas. So, a general th rule of thumb when you're choosing canvas is um, uh, the lighter weight is, is going to uh, stretch more, um, it's going to stretch easier, uh, you're going to have a, an easier time working with it, but when you prime it, it's going to shrink up a lot more than heavyweight canvas, uh, which can be a concern if, um, if the canvas, you know, uh, is pretty taut when you stretch it and then it tightens up even more uh, it can rip the canvas um, can pull out of the, the staples or it can bend the stretcher bar a little bit um, heavier weight canvas isn't going to um, is gonna be a little tougher to stretch but um, uh, when you do prime it it's pretty much gonna stay right where it is um, it's not gonna shrink up a lot so um, you have a lot of leeway with small uh, canvases it doesn't matter too much but um, Pay attention to that when you're using larger canvases, because a shrink up over over a large canvas can can cause actually quite a lot of force. 
So, um, a, you know, a good default is, is to go with a medium weight canvas. All right, um, let us move on to the next step. You're gonna take your uh, stretcher bar and uh, put that face down on the table. You're gonna um, pull the canvas over just to check that you've uh, got it laid out properly. Looks like I do. And uh, generally the way this works is you're going to uh, start from the center and just kind of work your way outward toward the corners uh, from the center and then uh, make sure that you uh, leave enough space to, uh, to fold the corner properly. All right, so let's do it. Uh, when I'm starting, I usually like to start on the uh, whatever side has the uh, longer width. And you don't have to measure this or anything, but just approximate. Again, just be careful about the amount of tension that you're using. You want it, um, you want it snug, but not like super tight um, or super loose. Uh, and you want a nice even tension all the way around. This is a pretty thin canvas, so I'm gonna uh, do pretty well with it, I think. Starts to sound like a, like a drum when it's uh, approaching the right tension. So now I have these these four points established. Uh, what I want to do is just kind of check the front. I'm going to make sure that uh, that this area here is stretching properly. And it looks uh, it looks pretty good. The tension feels all right for this small of a canvas. When I push here, I'm not really hitting the the stretcher bar. Um, so it's looking good so far. Um, and as I go out to the corners, I can add more and more tension. So now what I do is I go on one side of the staple, uh, pull, and I'm kind of pulling both this way and that way so that um, I uh, avoid wrinkles coming up on the front. And if I want, I can tug here too, just to make sure. I'm going to tack in the staple on each side. Again, just kind of pulling that way and that way. Making sure everything's coming out evenly. You don't need a fancy electric staple gun to do this, but it saves a lot of muscular effort. So once I get uh, three to five staples on the short side, I wanna stop and, make, and then even out the distance as I go to the corner. On this, I'm only gonna do uh, three and then add a couple of staples on the long side. And uh, the spacing between staples is pretty idiosyncratic. I've seen everything from one to four inches apart. Um, I usually do uh, about an inch and a half or two inches. Um, and I find that that works for me and what I prefer. So again, I'm checking the front. Already this is shaping up pretty well. There's a good amount of tension, not a lot. Um, you can see the difference in tension in the corners where I haven't stretched it yet and in the center where it has been stretched. Boom. So already a lot of the wrinkles are coming out too. <clears throat> so now what I want to do is uh, make sure that this distance is the same before I start getting to the corners. So I need to add one more staple on each side and uh, on each of the long sides to make sure things are, are even. So when you get to the corner you want everything basically to be where it needs to be.
And if you do this correctly, um, the corners will be easy. If you uh, have wrinkles and stuff, the corners aren't, aren't going to be as uh, forgiving. But I'll show you how to do a good corner. They're not too difficult, especially with a little practice. Now here I want to make sure that I'm not going to get in the way of, uh, of the corner just yet. Um, so what I'm going to kind of do is uh, do like a test fold of the corner and see how many more staples I can put in. I can put in basically one more before I get to the corner or have to start thinking about the corner. Uh, and uh, yeah, so one more staple. Boom. All right. At first, I like to work um, side to side so that the tension becomes like even. Uh, and that at the end, as you go towards the corners, you can kind of work in a circle around. Um, it matters a little less at that point uh, because you've already established most most of the way the stretcher bar is going to look. Again, I can see here that, that the staples, the tension on the staples already started to tear the, uh, the canvas a little bit. So that's just something to be cognizant of. It's getting pretty tight now. Okay, so it's at this point uh, where I'm at the corners where I have to decide where the fabric is gonna go. The fabric has to go kind of on the, on the outside here of one or the other. Um, if I want to do a horizontal, uh, I may want them on the on the sides. If I if I want a vertical, I uh, uh, it just it just kind of depends on preference whether you want the fabric to go like that on the sides and have that little extra there, or whether you want the fabric to go here. Um, and it doesn't make too much of a difference. Uh, it's just kind of an aesthetic thing, um, an aesthetic detail. And uh, depending on how you frame, people might not even see it. Um, uh, and you'll just develop a preference over time. I'm going to go ahead and put them, uh, put them on the sides like that. Um, but I think what you want to do is just make sure that, that it's done consistently. So you either want to do these, the two here, and the two here. You don't want to like mix them up unless you go in a pattern, unless you do one here, one here, one here, one here, um, kind of going around in a circle like that. Um, but I find as far as uh, uh, the cleanliness of everything, it just makes more sense to put them both on the same side. So we'll do that. The way this works is pretty simple. Um, you're going to give a little tug towards the corner. And here I'm being very gentle because this canvas is so thin. Um, and you're going to make... Uh, two folds and play with them a little bit. The first fold is a little uh, 45 degree fold just to kind of uh, get a little of the excess out of the way. And you'll notice that there's gonna be a 45 degree angle in here. The next fold is gonna be the fold right here that goes along the edge. Um, now I'm gonna mess this up on purpose just so you can see. So I wanna line this up right along the edge, the corner of the canvas. And uh, I know that if this happens where this is extended over, that I have, um, that I have um, messed up my, my stretching or my fold. So what I do is I unfold it while holding this down and adjust it until it goes right up along the edge and stays along the edge. 
and that it stays flat here along the side of the along the side of the uh, stretcher bar. So I think that's a pretty good corner. So um, what I can do here is I can tack this canvas down a little bit further, maybe even sneak um, two more staples in, and uh, I can tack this maybe. Uh, it's a little close. I could maybe get one one more staple in, but I do want to do this uh, because the more the more um, I establish the tension towards the corner, like the less work it's going to be to do um, to put this corner in. Tack. Sneak in one real close. Okay, so that's going to make the corner very easy to fold. So again. You pull that way, and then you have this 45 degree angle that's starting to be established. Then you fold over. And then you fiddle and adjust until it lines up perfectly how you want it. Then here, I can kind of pull, get some tension going. What I like to do is tack this one first. Then I like to tack here second. And you can see there that I've got a good corner set up. Um, you can see that this is a nice even tension throughout. The corner is pretty good here. Um, see if I can't get a close up of how this corner looks. And that is a properly done corner. All right, let's uh, finish off the other one. So I'm going to do the same thing on this corner, and I kind of know how, how this is going to work out, so I'm just going to pull a little tension, and I'm going to tack towards, towards the corner again. Again, I'm establishing, looking for that little 45 degree angle, and I know there I've kind of messed up. So I'm going to adjust again, and adjust one more time, and there I have it. So I'm just going to give it a tug on the uh, bits of the canvas that are folded under, make sure they're folded correctly, felt a little, little extra weirdness under there. The main thing is you want this side to look, uh, to look nice and pretty. Again, I'm tacking there first because I want that tension established. And then I'm tacking here second just to clean up anything. So I'm going to pull on that 45, then pull here and tack a couple of staples in. And remember, I'm looking for this 45 degree angle, so I can kind of pull both of these at the same time. And then make the adjustment. Once you get the feel for corners, this stuff happens pretty, uh, pretty quickly, easily. Um, One more time, pull towards the corner. Then I know that I can tack a couple of staples in down here. Then look for this 45 degree fold. Pull the excess over. Make this line up and adjust as necessary. All right.
Okay, that's it. All right, that is a uh, more or less uh, complete uh, stretch. You can feel, or you can hear, that it's kind of drum-like, giving it a flick. Um, I can feel across, see if I've messed up any spots. The tension feels mostly even. And again, when I prime it, it's gonna have uh, a lot more tension to it. Uh, the last thing you need to do with your stretcher bar is, uh, is uh, uh, clean up the back once the canvas is stretched. Um, this is pretty ugly. Uh, nobody who buys your work is gonna wanna look at the back and see that. Um, it's just gonna get in the way when you're trying to hang stuff. Um, you know, all these little extra threads can come out and show. Um, so there are a couple ways to take care of them. Um, I prefer uh, a sort of simple way, um, a really professional way that, that most people don't do uh, or even probably know about is um, what you can do with the excess is pull it back, then you can fold it as many times as you need to, then fold it over again, and then you can tack this down. That leaves it looking really professional. Um, what you can do here is you can even just uh, fold that in at a little 45 too. Um, this I find gives too much thickness to the canvas, so it kind of like pops off the wall a little too much for me. Um, and if I'm gonna frame and attach a frame to the back, I don't want any extra any extra thickness um, back here. So uh, so what I do is I just cut along the inside of the of the uh, stretcher bar and follow that as as a guide. Um, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, my razor blade or scissors or whatever you have and uh, put it right up next to the to the stretcher bar and cut and I'm gonna continue on down in that line cutting off all the excess and then go in both directions Now that is uh, a much cleaner look. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on uh, the other side and then come back and get the, uh, get the long sides. I like using a carpet knife for this because the razor blades are just so sharp. Makes everything so much easier. Scissors sometimes don't work as well. do is go back along the uh, inside on the long sides and I'll be done. So if I want, I can just kind of come back and get some of these loose ends out. All right, there it is. Um, what I like to do with these with these little edges is add uh, a couple more staples. So I want to put this put this down on the edge and really dig these in, so that there's no chance of these like coming up and showing. Here, the back looks pretty good. Um, uh, better quality canvases than, than uh, old leftover drop cloth uh, will cut a little bit better. There won't be as much um, 
uh, and as many loose ends. The uh, front look, looks pretty good. You can see most of the wrinkles have popped out, um, and there are just these stains left from old paint. Um, but uh, that's it. A nicely stretched canvas. All right, that is it for uh, part two of making your own canvases. Um, uh, so far, we've uh, built a proper stretcher bar, and uh, we've learned how to stretch. Um, part three is gonna be uh, how to go about priming this uh, bad boy. And uh, part four um, will be concerns about um, uh, larger size uh, stretcher bars and stretching larger canvases. Um, so uh, we'll go on to uh, some, some higher level um, questions and some more difficult um, situations because uh, stretching large canvases does uh, pose uh, uh, somewhat of a difficult situation. So um, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, if there's any questions, feel free to email me, mead at ausquared.com, and uh, I will help you out. Until next time, uh, take care.